So this is something that's been on my mind for a long time, and it's pretty inconsequential when you think about it. But um, as someone who's got into a lot of prolonged discussions, heated discussions, one might say, on certain One Piece communities over it, I thought I would just go ahead and make a video on it. The theory that Blackbeard is a Cerberus, absorbed a twin brother in the womb and contains his spirit, physically still has a twin attached to his body, anything at all related to that is really dumb. I, I like theories. I like fan theories. I like examining the evidence, finding fun ways that things add up. I've called a lot of One Piece theories dumb over the years, but this is by far one of the dumbest. And it bothers me because it's really prolific. The basic gist of the theory, if you don't know, and I'll, I'll say this straight up, I will be talking very briefly about something from the most recent arc. And of course, this theory involves something that happened at Marineford, Marineford, when we hit the time skip. So if you're not at least up to the time skip, I don't know why you're watching this theory, since you probably don't even think Blackbeard's that important of a character. The basic gist of the theory, we all know that Blackbeard somehow managed to take two devil fruits, something that we've been told will cause your body to basically destroy itself or you just die. Never seen anyone else do it. As far as we know throughout history, we've never heard of anyone else who's done this. So naturally there's gonna be a lot of theories about how he did it. And you know, that's a really fun kind of secret of One Piece is how did he do it? Cause we still don't know. And I imagine we probably won't know for still quite a while, honestly. Uh, I have my own theory, which I feel like is the most obvious theory. I'll get to that at the end. But for now, I'm going to go through the Cerberus theory. I say the Cerberus theory, but I'm going to cover both the Cerberus theory and the, the twin theory, which basically fall under the same kind of thought category and use the same evidence to come to a different ish conclusion. So the Cerberus theory goes like this. The reason why Blackbeard is able to absorb more than one devil fruit into his body is because he actually has a mythical Zoan that turns him into a Cerberus, three-headed hell dog guardian of the underworld. The idea is either because he has multiple heads or he has multiple stomachs, I guess, or perhaps multiple consciousnesses, consciousness spirits within his body that he can use more than one devil fruit. That's the main one. And that he had this Cerberus fruit from before he got the Yami Yami no Mi, the darkness fruit. I'll get into why that's stupid in a moment. I'll get into why this is all stupid in a minute. That's one. The other theory is the twin theory, and this one comes in a couple different flavors. The idea here is that Blackbeard either had or has a twin and this twin is actually the one who holds the Gura Gura fruit. This one makes more sense to me. The evidence for it is non-existent, but this one makes more sense to me, kind of. So there's two kinds of this theory, the spiritual twin and there's the physical twin. The spiritual twin suggests that Blackbeard absorbed his twin into his own body in the womb, like some kind of homicidal fetus. And because he basically ate his twin, then he has two spirits in one body. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. The other theory, the one that physically makes more sense, although has still almost zero evidence for it, is that he has a physical conjoined twin, possibly a half-formed twin, like a Quato type situation from Total Recall, uh, a Krang type situation from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Basically, that he has some kind of partial twin in his body somewhere, and that that is the twin that uses the fruit. Uh, there's a third twin theory, actually, now that I think about it. This is one I've only seen mentioned once, but. Uh, so this one is that he's not actually a twin, it's a triplet situation. And it's these three triplets, each one uses one fruit. You're asking yourself, well, where's the other triplets? Does he just keep them like in a cabin? We've clearly seen like one body using both fruits, right? So the other triplets, they're inside his body. The other triplets are inside his body. The idea goes that essentially the other two reside within the black hole that the Yami Yami lets him create. And when we see his arm come out, it's actually one of the twins. So if we see one arm using the Yami Yami and another arm using the Gura Gura, those are two different arms of two different people. And he's secretly like doing like some kind of weird trickery with the fruit basically to have his own arm disappear into the fruit's negative space 
and have another arm come out. So just real quick, I'm going to address that one because that one's main body of evidence is actually a little different than the rest. And that is that we see in a couple different panels uh, that Blackbeard has different jewelry on his hands. It looks different. In one panel we see he has rings and in the next we see he doesn't have rings. And this lines up with him not using the Gura Gura and then using the Gura Gura. See, I'll admit this is like actual evidence, but at the same time, I feel like it's not enough. I mean, Oda's really good at consistency, but you can point out like those kind of visual mistakes every other chapter practically. Usually they're super, super minor and not as noticeable as something like the rings, but those kind of mistakes happen. And here's the thing, I will say, given more evidence, I could be convinced to believe that one. That is the only one. So let's get into the others, the bulk of the evidence. I'm going to knock these out of the park one after the other. Okay, let's go. I'm going to save the best for last. Number one, Marco referring to his body as weird. There is a point where Marco is talking about Blackbeard, and Marco comments that Blackbeard has a weird body. I mean, okay, so this one's a stretch. <laughs> They're all stretches. They're all stretches. Marco referring to Blackbeard's body as weird could mean I don't know how many different things. Like, to consider it proof of this theory is kind of mind-boggling to me. Because when I think of, like, Blackbeard having a weird body, you know, he's got a very tanky body, for one thing. Uh, this is probably something Marco has had the chance to observe since Blackbeard was on his crew for, like, what, 20 years or something like that? Like, we know that Blackbeard has learned to basically take hits without blocking them. Uh, we see this during his fight with Ace. He very specifically says to Ace that because of the nature of his fruit, he cannot avoid attacks, and he basically pulls attacks into him and has to tank them. So it could be referring to his body post-fruit. It could be referring to his body pre-fruit and how he's basically this actually really strong fighter, but he plays it really low-key on Whitebeard's crew. The whole time Blackbeard was on Whitebeard's crew, he specifically went out of his way to avoid being noticed as as strong as he was. There's also the other aspect to his body that Marco could be referring to, which we actually learn in a very recent chapter. I will say spoilers for this, although it's a pretty minor spoiler, still. Spoilers. We learn from listening in to Shanks and uh, Buggy's conversation when they're with, you know, Gold Roger, and we are told that basically no one has seen the guy sleep. We've never seen him sleep, which lines up with the child version of Blackbeard that Oda drew, where he's crying under a moon. So this could also be the weird body comment. I'm sure if Blackbeard spent 20 years never sleeping on Whitebeard's ship, that would be a pretty weird thing, and I can see someone commenting on it. Now, a reoccurring thing with this theory is the idea that a lot of people know about Blackbeard's condition, but are for some reason being coy about it. Like, they don't want to share the information directly, not just with the audience, but with everyone. It's really bizarre. This is one of those instances. If Marco saying that his body was weird was referring to the fact that he had a Cerberus devil fruit. He had a vestigial twin. He can sense another soul in his body. Why would he be so vague about it? Why wouldn't he say, oh, that guy's body is actually a mystical Zoan devil fruit, and he has three heads, and maybe that's why he can use multiple fruits. Like, that'd be some pretty smart commentary from a pretty smart character like Marco, right? Or like, oh, that guy's body is weird. I saw that he's got a twin sticking out of his back. But no, he just says his body's weird. And he's just super vague about it. Point number two. His flag has three skulls. Okay, so this one gets kind of wibbly-wobbly. So people use this to suggest a Cerberus connection. This one is mostly in regards to either the Blackbeard triplet theory where they're stored inside his body, or your classic Blackbeard Cerberus theory, mythical Zoan, all that. It is a very unique flag, but I think the flag has a different connection that, although I wish I could take credit for for noticing, it actually comes from someone else. Far too long ago for me to quote them, some guy on Reddit. <laughs> Anyways, the Blackbeard crew, and Blackbeard in particular, kind of deal with fate and destiny and all that kind of jazz. 
It's like kind of the overarching theme of the crew itself. In Greek mythology, there are these three entities known as the fates. They weave the destiny for every man as he is born. They determine what happens to you, basically. And this goes in line very much with how Oda tends to play things. He loves like mythology. Blackbeard's crew is very big on destiny and fate. So in Mock Town, when we first run into Dr. Q, we find out that he's been handing out apples at random to people in the town. We also find out that some of these apples are explosive and kill you when you eat them. The other apples are just fine. Dr. Q hands out apples at random and he leaves it up to chance to decide the fate of his victims. Either they get a delicious apple or they get blown up. We also have Blackbeard and Impel Down giving all the prisoners of level 6 a chance to fight for freedom, a sort of choose their own destiny moment. Blackbeard in general seems to believe in destiny and fate. It's part of his kind of mirrored image version of Luffy, where Luffy very much seems to be on a path of fate, but doesn't really acknowledge it. Blackbeard is making his own path of fate. Everything he does is carefully crafted and planned out. He spent 20 years waiting to find just the right item before he could set everything into motion to put himself immediately on the top of the playing field. Blackbeard was very big on destiny and making his own destiny, so I feel like the Fates theory, which is a theory, we don't know why he has the three skull flag, is the most likely one. Number three. Shanks Scar. This is a really short one for debunking. <laughs> a lot of people say that Shanks Scar which is the three slashes along the eye, must have been caused by Blackbeard when he was in a Zoan state, which also explains why Shanks was warning Whitebeard Ace was in trouble going up against Blackbeard. So there's two quick and easy ways to debunk this. Number one, Blackbeard was shown in the background in one panel before he got his devil fruit to use a weapon that is basically Wolverine claws. Three claws with a small handle to hold in your hand giving you a wolverine claw. It lines up perfectly with Shank's scar. It might not be perfect, as the scar is very jagged, but I think that can be chalked up to artistic freedom, considering it's a direct match for how the scar looks. The other issue with this theory, the idea that Shanks was warning Whitebeard because Blackbeard was secretly housing a Zoan devil fruit, when it were shown exactly in the story why he was warning Blackbeard, Whitebeard underestimated Blackbeard. He was complacent with him on his crew, and he never saw him as much of a threat. He thought that Ace would be able to handle Blackbeard. Shanks, having gone up against Blackbeard, knew that he was a bigger threat than he let on to be, and with his new devil fruit was likely too much for Ace to handle. And it turned out to be exactly the case. Shanks saw through Blackbeard's deception when Whitebeard didn't. And that is what he was warning Whitebeard about. He didn't want Ace to suffer the fate that eventually happened. Okay, now we get to the main piece of evidence. Now, I saved this one for last because it's the one that most everything hinges on. And I feel like it's the one that's honestly the most ridiculous. I think I've already said that about some of these. I feel like it's all pretty ridiculous, to be honest with you. Number four. In Mock Town... Luffy and Blackbeard refer, Luffy and Zoro refer to Blackbeard as they. Okay, so a quick recap for you in case you forget the scene. After arriving in Mock Town and walking past all sorts of weird shady happenings, uh, Luffy happens upon Blackbeard inside of a bar. They have some intense disagreements over the food. So after this disagreement with Blackbeard in the bar that Luffy has, after Luffy and Zoro get the shit out of them, they leave the bar, and as they're walking out, we get Blackbeard's famous little speech to Luffy about following your dreams and believing in things. At this point, Nami asks Luffy and Zoro, why don't we ask him, referring to Blackbeard, about the Sky Island? And Zoro and Luffy both reply back that it's not him, it's they, and they keep walking. Okay, so the crux of this theory lies in the idea that Luffy and Zoro were able to detect 
that Blackbeard either A, was secretly a Cerberus man, B, had a vestigial twin on his body, or C, that he had multiple spirits residing within his body, either through the Yami Yami or through, uh, Pat... So the idea behind this is that Luffy and Zoro were able to detect whichever flavor of Cerberus theory you believe in on Blackbeard, and they corrected Nami. Now, here's why that doesn't make any sense and is really dumb. I'm gonna break this one down in parts two, so get ready. Number one, we've already seen through the lens of Luffy, Zoro, and Nami, half of Blackbeard's crew inside of Mock Town. They encountered Doc Q directly, and they observed Burgess earlier on, shouting from the rooftops, because it's Burgess. So when they refer to him as they, I just find it a lot more likely that they're referring to Blackbeard's crew, who is probably watching them at that very moment, and they were able to notice this and told Nami that, basically saying to her, this isn't one man, this is actually a crew of people, and the reason why we're not stopping to ask them is because they're probably dangerous. Which is another point about this particular one that bothers me, because if they really were correcting Nami on him having this strange body situation going on, what purpose did it serve? Let's say Blackbeard is a Cerberus. What is the point of Luffy and Zoro correcting Nami like that? It wouldn't change the question that she's asking. Just because the guy has a devil fruit that you can't tell, or because he has a vestigial twin, doesn't mean you can't ask him for directions. But if you're using that they to refer to a crew of dangerous men who are watching you, it makes a lot more sense that they would use that as their reason for not stopping and talking to him. And in fact, we see immediately following their departure from Jaya that Blackbeard was in fact very dangerous as he immediately goes after them upon realizing what their bounty was. So the other part of this piece of evidence, which again is the central evidence to this whole theory. I'm gonna go put this chopper back. <clears throat> so the other crucial part of this bit of evidence is the fact that Luffy and Zoro are able to detect this thing at this part in the story, which falls apart really quickly when you think about it, because again, this kind of calls back to Marco being able to tell that Blackbeard has a weird body, again, referring to it in the case of a theory where if Luffy and Zoro are able to detect this, presumably using observation hockey, it can't be the voice of all things, mind you, because Zoro knows it too. He wasn't just copying Luffy, he very clearly said that as a confirmation that he noticed too. So what this implies is that before they even had seen observation hockey in use, which we see in Skypiea, under the term mantra, that they were able to detect this with no training, no knowledge of its existence, and no exposure to it. What this means is that most of the pirates in the New World, certainly anyone of a significant rank, would be able to detect this. And for 20 years, Blackbeard has been on Whitebeard's ship. Are you telling me that for 20 years, Blackbeard went with this huge weird secret that gave him this unique trait and just out of courtesy no one ever brought it up directly no one ever called it out for what it was and said that guy is actually a cerberus human he's eating a devil fruit but he's keeping it hidden or that guy has multiple souls in his body i can feel it and everyone around me and my crew can also feel it but we're not going to comment on it so that's like the biggest piece of evidence, the they line. Uh, it strikes me as it strikes me as so much more obvious that they're referring to Blackbeard's crew, who they've already seen around town, and it's much more likely that they actually notice them than that they had this sudden development of observation hockey that implies that basically everyone in the new world where Blackbeard has been sailing as a pirate on Whitebeard's crew which is full of hockey users, and either no one noticed, aside from a few select individuals, or no one bothered to like directly address it, ever. And again, Zoro and Luffy, if he was a Cerberus, and for whatever reason they felt a need to correct Nami, which is 
definitely not the kind of behavior that either of them tend to do. Like, <laughs> it's pretty opposite of their general intelligence personas to be correcting Nami on a minor grammatical error when it does not affect the current situation at all. Why would they not simply tell her, oh no, it's not he, he's secretly a monster. He secretly is two people. He secretly has the souls of an absorbed fetus brother inside of him. Just gonna throw this out here at the end. I know I mentioned there'd be spoilers. So uh, here they are. So uh, slight spoilers for Wano now. The idea of it being a mythical Zoan kind of goes out the window when you consider that Orochi has, uh, what is it? Nine heads? Seven heads? He has a lot of heads is the point. I'll put the number somewhere. Number of Orochi's heads will be somewhere here. Point is, Orochi has a bunch of heads from a mythical Zoan fruit. This is exactly the same hypothetical scenario as the original Blackbeard Cerberus theory. If it worked like described in the theory, then the Orochi Devil Fruit would be the most ridiculous Devil Fruit in the existence of One Piece. You could consume an insane amount of fruits. It would be the most nonsensical thing in the story. The amount of heads that Orochi has is 100% proof positive that the Cerberus theory is nonsense in its original form. Even if the evidence wasn't already nonsense, that essentially proves that if it did work like that, then the most powerful devil fruit in the world is very clearly that one. Oh, and before I forget, so a little bit of supplemental evidence I'm going to throw out there. Blackbeard spent 20 years looking for the Yami Yami no Mi. 20 years. He is self-stated, talking to people that he has no reason to hide anything from, that that fruit was everything to him. It was the central key to all his plans. So I've been ranting for a long time. So thankfully you all will get to see an edited down version of this rant. But uh, I still have to edit it, so I'm going to wrap this up. What do I think is the secret to Blackbeard absorbing multiple devil fruits into his body? I think it's honestly pretty obvious. Not in the details, but in the metaphysical sense of the thing. So he spent 20 years searching for the Yami Yami no Mi, which has a couple unique properties to it, one of which being that it negates devil fruits entirely. So he specifically states that he cannot go intangible with this fruit. It is unique among Slogia fruits in that you cannot go intangible with it. You're always in a solid form. I think he was lying a little bit here, which I know, shocker, Blackbeard, the most piratey pirate in One Piece would lie. I believe that the Yami Yami can't turn intangible because its counter element is everywhere. When light is shining on his body, any amount of light, he cannot go intangible. He can't turn into his element because it's the opposite. So after Whitebeard had died, he had his crew throw a very large, very heavy tarp over his body and Blackbeard went under it by himself. When he was under there, he did something. What is that something? I believe that he made himself intangible. He turned into darkness underneath the blanket because all light had been snuffed out. And in this intangible darkness form, he was able to absorb either part of Blackbeard's body, either where the devil fruit might reside, like the heart, or was able to pull the devil fruit out of his body itself, both of which would be utilizing, of course, the devil fruit negating powers of the Yami Yami, along with its ability to pull things into it like a black hole. Once the devil fruit is inside of his body, the tarp is lifted, his body returns to its solid state. The devil fruit is inside of him, and it's trapped there. I imagine only able to be released when Blackbeard is shrouded once again in darkness, and if he chooses to let it out. Honestly, I think this is really heavily implied, just through the nature of the fruit, and through the nature of what was happening when he absorbed Blackbeard's Gura Gura no Mi. So, there you have it. Uh, Blackbeard Cerberus theory, I think it's complete hokum, bunk, hogwash. It's nonsense, honestly, in my opinion. I think the Blackbeard Cerberus theory is a good example of a theory where you take a very tiny bit of evidence and you come to a conclusion and then you find lots of other tiny bits of evidence and you really stretch them out to make them fit into that theory.
Give me your thoughts and comments down below. And if you want to have a more spirited debate about it, you can always swing on by my Twitch channel whenever I'm streaming. Uh, give the video a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this, or if you think that this is the ramblings of a madman. In which case, I will probably still make more videos like this. So with that said, have yourself a wonderful evening. That's it. That's all I got.